Today, Amazon announced that it was canceling plans for a new headquarters in New York City after fierce local opposition there. Our economics correspondent Paul Salman has more on the story. It's part of our weekly series, Making Sense. Amazon's decision was a stunning reversal, announced in a matter-of-fact press release that said it was scrapping plans for the second headquarters in New York because, quote, a number of state and local politicians have made it clear that they oppose our presence. Okay. Local politicians like New York City Councilor Jimmy Van Bramer. The mayor and the governor caved to the richest man on earth and then handed the bill to each and every New Yorker. It was just a year ago when more than 230 regions were bidding for Amazon HQ2 with quirky promo videos. Hey Alexa, where should Amazon locate HQ2? Hmm, in Frisco, Texas. And with lavish tax breaks. In November, Amazon announced the prize. Its second headquarters would be split between Northern Virginia and New York, which offered nearly $3 billion in tax breaks. This is the largest economic development uh, initiative that has ever been done by the city uh, or the state. But residents feared soaring rents, and New York's successful bid drew the ire of labor groups and liberal politicians including Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Earlier this month, Governor Cuomo warned opponents that their protests would not result in better terms, but in Amazon pulling the plug. For the state Senate to oppose Amazon was governmental malpractice. And if they stop Amazon from coming to New York, they're going to have the people of New York State to explain it to. State Senator Michael Giannaris, in whose district the new Amazon facility would have been located, was one of those who opposed. But today, his ire was redirected to Amazon. What it looks like to me is Amazon couldn't get its way, uh, and when it couldn't get exactly what it wanted, exactly how it wanted, it left, because Amazon believes it's more important than, than the governments of this country. Amazon said today it does not plan to start a new search process, it will continue to build a major facility in Northern Virginia and expand its operations in Nashville, Tennessee. For the PBS NewsHour, this is economics correspondent Paul Salman. And let's take a closer look at why this deal fell apart over corporate subsidies and incentives, anger over gentrification and housing, and the politics around it. J. David Goodman of the New York Times has been covering this for months, and he joins me from the Times newsroom. So, David Goodman, welcome to the News Hour. What was the main opposition uh, there in New York to what Amazon was trying to do? Well, it's interesting. The opposition never really coalesced around one set of, of issues. I mean, you had uh, opponents who were, who were union members um, who said, and union leaders who said that the, the anti union posture of Amazon in general was uh, offensive to New Yorkers. You had local activists in Queens who were saying, uh, that you know, this was going to ruin the character of Queens. It was going to gentrify that area more rapidly. Um, and then you had a lot of people that were skeptical of the, uh, the size of the subsidy that was going to uh, the richest uh, man in the, in the world and, and one of the most powerful companies in the world. And so all of that sort of fueled a, a, an, an opposition that while the goals were different uh, among different members of, uh, of that group, they, they did sort of come together to say, you know, we don't like this deal. We weren't made a part of it early on. And, um, and we'd rather see it either remade or, or, or nixed. So when you put those different sources of opposition together, how do you think the Amazon's proposal create all that opposition? How did it force it to bubble to the surface? It's really interesting. I mean, when Amazon started their uh, search for a second headquarters in, in late 2017, the political landscape in, in Western Queens, where the, they ultimately ended up going, uh, was completely different. You had, um, in the span of a few months, the election, uh, the primary um, election of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez unseating a very powerful uh, local um, uh, party boss and a representative in Joe Crowley. And then a few months later, you had the state Senate in New York State turn to Democratic hands. And those two political developments um, really energized uh, an activist base and scared a lot of local elected officials and others who thought maybe the neighborhoods um, were shifting under their feet and they didn't quite understand their voters. And then um, you had the state Senate now in Democratic hands and, and they had the ability to appoint to a key board uh, a person who could actually veto this um, plan. And so all of that happens in the span of a few months 
and then the deal is announced right after a few days after election day. And so it's almost as if you know the landscape or the ground you know changed under Amazon's feet. They weren't prepared for it, and even on some level, the governor and, and the mayor didn't seem to fully appreciate how much um, things had, were sort of fluid and, and changing in that corner of Queens. And this was enough uh, opposition to override the fact that what the public opinion polls were showing a large majority of people were in favor. That's right. I mean, that's what was amazing um, about this decision today and what made it so unexpected, that even though you had had opposition that was growing in strength and seemed to have uh, scored a win last week when one of the main opponents in the local uh, or in the state Senate, uh, a local state senator, was put on a board that actually had veto power over this deal, even though you had that, you still had the sense that um, the governor, who was very much in favor of the mayor of New York City, were going to find a way through that political impasse, that it wasn't too big uh, a hurdle. And you've seen, you know, uh, land use deals in, in New York City are often fraught and take a long time to, to get through and have, you know, uh, vocal opposition, you know, loud uh, protests. But Amazon, uh, uh, as the people that I've spoken to today have said, the executives were not expecting this kind of negativity. They felt they were invited to New York and they wanted to be welcomed here and that they weren't prepared to wait a full year uh, before the deal actually finally got approved at the state level um, and sort of endure this negativity and this, uh, uh, these attacks for, for that time. And so they decided uh, late last night, we're told, uh, to pull the plug. And then they called uh, the governor and the mayor this morning and said, um, we're not going to come there after all. And, and I hear you saying that Amazon was really not prepared to do what it was going to take to turn around to satisfy this opposition. Yeah, I mean, they felt that they had been invited here, um, you know, by the governor and by the mayor. And, you know, in fact, that the, the city was competing. It was one of, uh, you know, uh, many cities that were competing around the country to try and, and win this sort of prize of 25,000 to 40,000 jobs. Actually, at the time, people thought it was 50,000 before they split it. And so they felt like that's what they were bringing to New York. And they didn't understand once the announcement happened that they'd have to do anything else. And in fact, they were very uh, resistant to doing that. They, they made a couple small concessions here and there, but they really weren't willing to negotiate. Their posture was that the deal was the deal that we negotiated with the governor and the mayor, and that uh, if we're not going to get that deal, if we're going to to be made to renegotiate it with state senators or others in New York City, uh, we'll just pack up our bags and go somewhere else. What is the loss of that? Uh, I mean, is there agreement on what the loss of these 25,000 potential jobs is going to mean for New York? Well, the governor and the mayor both, but particularly the governor, highlighted the fact that the three billion in uh, incentives that were almost all as of right tax subsidies for actually having created the jobs would have um, brought in uh, some uh, nine times the amount in um, tax revenue to the um, area. They said about 27 billion. So we won't see that presumably. But you know, there, New York City is a is a big place, and it adds um, you know many more. Or at least in recent years, it's added more than the number of jobs that Amazon would br would br be bringing to its economy. And so, um, while the area of Queens will be affected, and it's not clear what will go there now, the city as a whole um, won't see a direct effect. But the, what um, the business community has been saying in response to this is that it sets a, a horrible precedent um, for uh, New York City that you know a, a major company can't. Uh, come here and, and can't sort of count on um, the promises and the deals that are being made um, at the economic development level. Um, it really calls into question that whole practice, at least in, in, in the state. Oh, really surprising developments today uh, in New York. J. David Goodman of the New York Times, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.